right, good morning everybody and uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We thought we'd do a little Christmas edition of the Hector and Mike experience. Mike is uh, nicely secluded in, his, in the North Pole uh, in Santa's house where it's nice and warm and he has hot chocolate. Hector, on the other hand, has decided to venture out into the wild of, uh, of the California beaches uh, with the beautiful sky in the background and uh, the water, the ocean. Um, and uh, Hector, I, I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's somebody behind you there. Um, yeah, you got, a, you got a couple of dog walkers right now. It's, uh, it's gorgeous right here. I'm in Ventura County. Uh, just brought the girls out here for the you know for Christmas time, hang out at the beach. Why not? It's uh, it's freezing cold up in Sacramento. It's raining cats and dogs, and so I might as well go to a place where people are actually walking the dogs. So <laughs> instead of the dogs swimming in the water, yeah. well, we'll keep an we'll keep an eye out to make sure nobody comes up from the beach and tries to kidnap you or anything like that, or if, or if a, a wayward ship shows up and tries to start dumping. You know, it's a load of toilet paper that's been sitting out in the harbor for the last two months out onto the beach. So anyway, it's a, it's been a, an interesting year. Um, we've been very grateful to those of you who have been listening to the podcast and appreciate and appreciate that. We encourage you to, you know, spread the spread the message out about what we're doing and what we're talking about. And we always welcome your feedback as well. Um, Hector, I thought we'd do a little, a little quick thing here. You know, just a little funny thing. You know, call uh, candy canes or coal. Uh, we'll throw out a name, and you tell us. You tell me what you, whether they're getting candy cane or, or coal for Christmas. How's that sound? We'll do something uh, a little different. That sounds great, Mike. Go All for right. It. Yeah. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you've got your list already ready to roll. So. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I haven't had coffee yet. All right, well, let's start with, you know, one of our favorite subjects, which is the great governor of California, Gavin Newsom. After uh, everything that's happened this year, does, is he getting candy cane or coal? Well, he's going he's gonna to get coal. Um, he's had a kind of a, a difficult year, a lot of by his own doing, and that's, you know, the pandemic, the Omicron, you know, what's happening right now. That's a lot of that's beyond his control. You know, you got a virus that's, that's uh, spread from one place. It, it obviously reaches into California as it does across the United States and the world. But, you know, the contradictions that he has, one set of group of people needs to get a vaccination. Then he goes out in court and tries to exempt other people who happen to be campaign donors. And so that in itself, you know, the contradictions there. Then, he, then right now we're, we've been dealing and we've been seeing throughout the TV all of the retail thefts. And... He constantly goes out there trying to defend. He goes, no, the, the legislation that I've passed or signed into law or supported, you know, this isn't contributing to it. But, I mean, we all see it for what it is. When you have zero bail, when you have no consequences for having reached out there, you're going to get organized individuals who are going to come in at 60, 40 at mass and go in raw places. And so, you know, just on those two things, plus in addition to, I, I don't know, it's, it's it seems as though Everyone's always trying to second guess whether his motives are for the best interest of California or they're just personal or he's trying to hide something. And I think that in itself, you know, gives him the call. Well, <laughs> let there be no doubt what his motives are for. It's, it's for like most politicians themselves. Um, I'm going to go with Candy Cane on his and, and strictly from his perspective. You know, he had a uh, he had a deal with the recall, but he won. And I remember a conversation we had on the show a few weeks ago when the uh, actually now a couple of months ago when the recall was going on. And, you know, we had the discussion of if he should win, uh, would he change? Would this experience change him? And it certainly has not. In fact, it's emboldened him because he won. So I think, you know, the fact that he won, the fact that uh, he now feels emboldened, the fact that um, it is, you know, truly all about, all about him. Um, you know, nothing learned from that whole experience, uh, and the fact that on the national level, because I mean, you know, you look at it, he obviously has the state well in hand. Um, you know, he has the legislature well in hand. He has 
most of the majority or the majority of the voters in California well in hand, even though he's running for re-election next year. Um, you know, he's now pushing his own agenda, wanting to turn California into a sanctuary state for abortions, which, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what that does for the state in terms of, uh, you know, maybe that's his new travel ad, uh, you know, come to California, get your abortion and go to Disneyland. I, I don't know. Um, for, I think, a lot of us, it's a pretty repugnant thing. Even if you're pro, pro-choice, it's a pretty repugnant thing to have your state. That's what we're known for. Um, you know, he's now talking about using the Texas law to take away people's guns in California. So he's emboldened. His agenda is emboldened. He's emboldened. Um, and, uh, you know, he's... he's uh, out of control. I mean, there's no there's no oversight of him whatsoever. And then on the political front, as well, you know, he can look ahead. I think past November of 22 to what's next. And on the national level, I think some of the folks that are on the national level are creating an environment that uh, could give him an opportunity down the road. So I'll give him a candy cane. Well, there you go. Well, right. and, and you're right. He, I think he's he's made. You're right in this sense. He's made the shift. Uh, we saw that, uh, you know, as this retail theft was going on, he comes out with with a book that he goes on the view, goes on all this, right. you know, goes on national TV to talk about his book on dyslexia, and then you know he goes out and does these this whole abortion uh, discussion or the situation, and so right. you yeah. know he, it looks like he's gearing up to run for for not just deal with the recall um, to deal with the election, but also get himself ready to go for the. Uh, presidency, which is going to come up in about three years. Not soon enough. Speaking of which, <laughs> let's, go, let's go to our illustrious president, Joe Biden, as I kept hearing him call the other day by his illustrious vice president to some somebody named Shama, Shamaine God or something like that. I was she, she did a tap dance on his head like nobody's business. Um, what do we think about the president? He's had a rough year. He's had a rough, uh, rough time since winning the election. Since winning the election, uh, Hector's trying to stay on the nice list with the IRS. I know. Well, here's the thing: is that uh, you know he, he came in with a lot of promise. He came in with a lot of views. I'm not Trump. I'm going to change the culture of uh, Washington D.C. But in reality, what's happened is, I mean, his poll numbers are in the tank. Uh, there's, you know, every issue he ends up touching, whether you know he's going to fix the economy. Uh, provide you know help or how oh, he said it, he was going to defeat uh, you know this COVID nineteen. Well, COVID nineteen is stronger than ever. We've got this entire problem right now with gasoline prices being sky high. Well, he cuts the Keystone pipeline, and then it's like he's wondering why the hell gas prices are so damn high when he goes out there and you know bashes our gas and oil oil industry mm. and starts putting barriers, regulations, and everything else there. Not only that. But, you know, you've got this economy right now. Inflation is out of control. And so, you know, things just aren't, aren't working as though he had promised. As he has said, all these different gaffes, I, this is the part that just, that just boggles my mind, all these gaffes that he goes out there and does, how he reads his teleprompter, you know, it's like, oh, uh, I'm supposed to pause right here. Oh, I'm supposed to ask a question from this reporter. It's like his team, it's not a new team. He's had this team that's experienced, that um, has been in politics for a long time. They got it. I mean, just the people around him. They've got they've got to t- do a better job of taking care of him, and not just on the political side of how offices are run, especially with members. Well, it's it's interesting. You would you would never look and say that this is a person that's been in um, by the performance. Let's just talk about performance for a second. By performance, you would never look and say this is a person that's been in office. Or in politics, or in government, in Washington D.C. for for nearly half a century, forty-seven or forty-eight years. Um, you know, he he has uh, some of these rookie mistakes that he and his people have made um, have been somewhat mind-boggling, um, both from a political and a policy perspective. Um, tone deaf is a, a word that I would use um, quite significantly. Again, on the policy side for this administration, you know, trying to say to people that um, inflation is not, you know, stop believing the fake news about inflation. It's not real. Um, You know, well, get your butt out of 
out of uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and go to go to Costco and and see how much toilet paper is, see how much you know um, basic supplies, you know uh, meat, chicken, pasta, every you know everything really um, how much more expensive it is, and uh, you might, he might have a different opinion of that, but they're really tone deaf about what they say. Um, you know they handled speaking of coal or candy canes, you know the king of coal. Uh, Joe Manchin so badly, uh, you know, even from the, fr literally from the first day, I mean, the Friday after they were sworn in, you got Kamala Harris on uh, radio in West Virginia, basically sending a message out to Joe Manchin, you know, we're the new team in town, we're in charge, you're not going to tell us what to do. Well, 11 months later, you know, I'm not sure she, I'm not sure you should be singing that song anymore, Kamala, because Joe Manchin is doing a pretty damn good job of telling you what to do. He's really schooled you all on on uh, on uh, policy and legislation, um, and you know I, I think that's another one that has surprised I think a lot of people. So I I agree with you. the The only concern I have about giving him coal is that he'll think it's candy cane and he'll start licking it, and, <laughs> and then we'll have a problem. But but here's the thing. I I think it's safe to say. When build back better becomes build back later, or you know starts going after your opponents and it becomes build back bitter, uh, and you've got the coronavirus running rampant as it is, and an admission by the president that they weren't ready for this new variant, which is mind-boggling again unto itself, and the disaster we had in Afghanistan, and the prices going up, and the supplies going down, and everything else. You know, what are you going to do? The brain surgeons at 1600 say, let's get a new dog. Let's get a new German Shepherd named Commander and bring bring Commander in. And it's like, well, you know, be careful what you do with something like that because, you know, some people might have more trust in Commander with the uh, red phone than, than the current occupants of 1600. Well, it's been interesting because in the last uh, week or so, there's been a lot more articles or the president saying that he's going to be running for re-election, that he's going to gear himself up for re-election. That's because he thinks it's in 22. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, yes, he probably does think it's in 22. But, you know, putting that aside, uh, no, I think there's a lot of calls that, you know, because of his poll numbers. And so you've got probably a lot of people who are ready on the Democratic side to start getting gearing up and start, you know, putting together a team, start putting together kind of some, you know, fundraising group. Saying okay, you know we've got three years until this thing is until this uh, election for president. Which, in reality, they've got a year. You know, once twenty twenty two is over with, then it's all you know full steam ahead for for the presidency. And so I think he's just you know maybe pushing everyone back. Well, that leads us to the next person. You know, because you're right about that. Um, but in doing so, really, the person he's trying to help is his vice president. Um, you know, she's had, you know, we talk about him having a tough year. I think, you know, she's haven't had an even worse year. I mean, at least he has, um, you know, he had some visibility and national exposure and um, going in with some goodwill uh, as a known quantity. Now, you know, has he squandered it beyond, you know, um, getting that back? You know, time will tell. But in her case, you know, she comes onto the national scene um, as a liberal senator from California without, you know, a, a, a lengthy record of accomplishment in the United States Senate. Um, you know, someone that was picked for the vice presidency, um, you know, it, it, certainly after a disastrous national campaign for president, um, which I think surprised a lot of people because they thought it would be better and, and it really went in the tank. Um, and it's been, you know, th that's what the highlight is. <laughs> you know, from there it goes downhill. Uh, you know, whether it's going to Central America, whether it's going, you know, overseas, whether it's not being involved in any way, shape or form in the withdrawal out of Afghanistan and the disaster it's been for women that were left behind. Um, whether it's been on negotiating with the Senate over key pieces of legislation, um, 
you know, it, it's really been, I haven't seen this kind of vice presidency since I don't know when. And, and clearly, you know, freely admit I'm a partisan, but when your poll numbers are below 30% and you really haven't screwed anything up, like created a war or something like that, or created the, a turn of the economy that causes people to go into depression, to have your poll numbers at below favorables below 30%, um, it really is an indication across the board of how people feel about you. So, um, you know, I, I think the I think what he's doing is is much related to the fact that he's almost trying to protect his vice president because all I don't think anybody really honestly thinks he's going to run again in 24, um, but everybody knows that she is, and so you know he's trying to hold those people at bay um, to try and see if she can get her uh, her feet to get you know get get on solid ground. Needless to say, I'd give her a big lump of coal. See, here's here's where I'm conflicted. I, I I'm going to give her candy cane because while oh. while you say, while you say the uh, you know he's trying to maybe help her out you know because everyone knows she's going to run, he's screwing her over every single bit of the way. I mean, gives her the issues of you know I don't know go deal with immigration. Good luck solving that one. You know he's she's just got I don't it just seems like he's got she's got all the shitty jobs, you know and. Then when it comes to it, you know, it's like, okay, you pass this billion dollar infrastructure, uh, trillion dollar infrastructure deal. She's nowhere to be found in the sense of, okay, she's got, she's got no speaking on it. You know, she, right. she doesn't have, she doesn't get to go to California or some of the battleground states and go and, you know, talk about uh, how much money is going to that particular state. Instead, he's giving it out to, you know, his, uh, his, his appointees. Which makes it difficult for her to try to go out there and build up her name on some goodwill things. Um, you know, she's got to get the Voting Rights Act. And so, you know, that in its sense, there's, there's going to be a lot of people upset one way or the other. And then you've got, at the same time, you've got his office who seems to be uh, blocking her in a lot of different, you know, uh, whether it's briefings, whether it's being involved in other, in other issues that, he, that he's got. And so... You know, in one sense or another, it seems, like I said, like as though he's making the job more difficult for her. Well, there's, what you just said, there's, not, there's no shortage of things to be dealt with that would actually make a difference in people's lives. There's the, there's the variant, the coronavirus, still going, you know, almost a year later, almost a year later, and you can look this up, there have been, sadly, more deaths under this administration than there was under the Trump administration related to COVID. Um, and that's after the implementation of several vaccines. Um, the president admits they caught flat-footed on this Omicron, uh, whatever it's called, um, the, the new strain of the virus, which, you know, fortunately seems to be less uh, powerful than, than the past ones. Well, that's, um, that's, beca that's because he thought, you know, Optimus Prime defeat, defeated all the crop, you know, with the Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, <laughs> I thought that too. It's, I'm curious how they come up with these names, by the way. I mean, it's, a, it's a Greek alphabet. Oh, is it really? Uh -huh. oh, okay. It's a Greek alphabet. Well, thank you, Greeks. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> but but again, it's chaos. I mean, you know, you've got you've got people saying, well, you got to mask up again. You got to wear a mask inside. You know, if you're going to have a holiday celebration, you know, it's like go out and and uh, and and get your uh, test kits to make sure everybody's negative. You know, I mean, I went to CVS the other day because I'm going to a Christmas dinner tonight with the family. You know, to get my test kits, and they were all out. So I got those early pregnancy test things, and I'm going to take it out of the box and put it out on the tray and see if anybody <laughs> anybody sticks it up their nose. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a big surprise in our family. Somebody's end up pregnant, but it, I mean, it's just insane because you can't get those things right now. And he says, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna send, you know, I don't know, 500 million or something like that, you know, out to people." Well, you know, they're not going to get it until next year. I mean, they're not going to get it until January. By that point in time, the way this thing spreads, um, you know, it's too late. And you know, you got other people within the medical community saying, well, it's just a matter of time before you get it. 
And that raises the question, you know, then why wear a mask? Um, but that's a huge issue that he got, he really, you know, was one of the reasons that he got elected. And it's out of it's spinning out of control for him. And he's got a vice president that he doesn't hand the ball off to. Here, take this. I'm dealing with I'm dealing with you know trying to make sure that people don't go bankrupt, trying to fill up their gas tank. There are no shortage of things that this administration could hand to the vice president to do that, if fixed, would make a difference in people's lives. And you know he doesn't do that. And, I, and you're right, that does show exactly what he thinks of uh, of his partner. So. I'm still going to, I'm still giving her coal, though. You can You're give still her still giving her coal? Candy. Yeah. Yeah, you can well, give it, her it, candy. Yeah, I, and, and it just baffles me because she's got, you know, a lot, and we talked about this before, a lot of star power. She's got a lot of access to individuals, mm -hmm. artists and stars, and, I mean, obviously she's not being utilized for it. And so what her purpose there is in the administration, I, it just, it baffles, it baffles me because uh, he could be doing so much more with that particular position, you know, and send her out there to go get these communities of interest, to go out into these battleground states, uh, build these coalitions, not just help her out, but more importantly, help out the administration right now, which badly needs it, but it's not being used. You, you don't have to look far in history, you know, to find the, the good uses of vice presidents. I mean, literally, you, you know, you saw Mike Pence, who, you know, when needed was, was the person that, that Trump put in charge. Um, you know, he also took on other economic issues for the country. Um, go back to Joe Biden when he was, you know, vice president for Barack Obama. I mean, you know, he was used then. I mean, he, it's this. There's, there's clearly it's like the 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 coach that has the field goal kicker, and he's on the twenty yard line, and you're sitting watching the game, and it's like this is a no brainer. It's fourth and one. Kick the field goal, take the points. You know, instead they, you know, they throw a pass into the end zone and it's incomplete. And you say, you know, what was that all about? They don't have trust in the kicker. And I think that's what it is right here. So, you know, Santa, Santa better bring some uh, confidence to, to them because it, it really is hurting the country. Um, having one guy who, as you said, um, on any given day, you don't, you don't, you cringe. It, it's now, it's no longer funny it's it's kind of cringeworthy sometimes and uh that's pretty it's pretty dangerous in a world we live in today and that's beautiful scenery so let's change it to something positive you getting candy or you getting coal uh, i should be getting can i'll get i'll be getting candy this year i've been oh, uh, yeah well uh, what do you got uh, alert notice there <laughs> <an air. laughs> amber for you no it's <laughs> sadly it's a silver alert maybe it is for me <laughs> I told my wife I was going out to breakfast, and now she can't find me, so she probably put out a silver <laughs> alert. Yeah, that happens no, it's, all the time around here. Yeah, <laughs> now it's been a good year. It's been it's been a fun year spending time with the girls. They're back in school. Uh, Bella's back in you know uh, softball, and uh, you know it's 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 been a good year. Uh, hey, you, just looking at the background and where you are and who you're with, it's been a blessed year for you. And I'm. I'm I'm happy for you. You deserve it. Oh, take you take yourself off mute. You're doing a Joe Biden here. There, there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, it started it started to sprinkle a little bit, so uh -oh. pushing that that uh, <laughs> pushing that unmute button it gets a little bit more difficult. <laughs> Fingers are sliding there, but no, it's it's been good. Like, uh, yeah, the girls uh, the girls are having a great time. It's I don't know why you said we should wake up at seven in the morning to do this podcast a little bit, but, but nonetheless. <laughs> You, you got the view, baby. That's that's what it's all about. I know, about. I know, and I'm in shorts too. So I don't you're know. In sh oh, good. That's, <laughs> yeah, you're a brave soul, man. So I'm in a short sleeve shirt with the heat on 68. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself, Mike? Uh, Ten days are cold for you. I, I'm a little bit of both. It's hold been on, a what, hold on. What is Julie getting you? Candy canes or cold? <laughs> that's one. Oh, uh, well, that's a. It's <laughs> no, it's probably candy canes. Yeah, I think she'll do candy canes. Probably put a little coal on it. I, I I asked for coal because you know I I got to make a, a trip down to San Diego next week, so I need some some energy to put into the car. I can't have, I don't want to have to do another mortgage on the house uh, with the gasoline. But yeah, I think she'll I think she'll do candy canes. I've I've been pretty good this year, especially you know the fact that I've been working from home. Um, you know, not doing much traveling. 
um, been, you know, been able to take care of little Pearl um, as she's gotten older and, and had more health challenges. Um, and, uh, you know, just making the coffee in the morning for her when she gets up and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it'll be candy canes. But one candy cane is good because there's a lot of other things that happen that, that kind of make it uh, not cold, but just a little, you know, a little bittersweet is probably a good way of putting it. But, you know, grateful to be around for another another year and uh, another Christmas. Um, a great, you know, holiday to celebrate. Um, one of, of great hope uh, for the future. Um, one of, of uh, you know, just very, very important. And, uh, you know, just looking forward to uh, what new adventures lie ahead. Um, one good thing for us is that as we look ahead to 2022 is, you know, the, the theme of our show is common sense in an uncommon world. You know, hopefully we keep our common sense because Lord knows there's going to be a very uncommon world in 2024, uh, 2022, as we uh, as we look ahead to, um, you know, not only the, the coronavirus and the economy and everything else, but, you know, let's add on top of that one hell of a crazy midterm election that's coming up. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun in 2022. Well, maybe next time we do the podcast, we could do it, we do it together. Uh and since it's in the same place, I'll be heading down uh, back out to, well, I'm going to head up to Sacramento for a little bit just for a day or two. Then I'm going to head back down to Southern California to go watch the Rose Bowl game. So, oh, great. Yeah, maybe we get together, grab some uh, grab some lunch, and maybe do the podcast we'll, yeah, we'll in do the same pod- room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. And if the weather's nice, we'll, we'll you know go down to Huntington Beach or something and do it there. And, and if it's not nice, we'll find a restaurant that has a nice fireplace. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> That's the one thing I notice is I'm getting older. My blood runs a little bit more thin. I'm afraid when I have to go back east to visit people, what it's going to be like. Oh, man, what are your friends going to say about you? They're getting soft. Oh, no, they, oh, yeah, they're, they're call, call me a wimp anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing that for a long the, the biggest question I get is, what the hell are you doing in California? It's like, ah, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, show show them a picture of the background. And say, you know, yeah, there you go. Here, here's our winter right here. That's right. Yeah, it, it rained last night. That was winter. <laughs> Big yep. difference. Big difference. Yep. So, everybody have a blessed Christmas. Um, we wish you, uh, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, um, we wish you much happiness, safeness, um, good health, and uh, and just have a blessed Christmas. And, and especially to you, Hector and and your family and, and the girls just, you know, have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you, Mike. And I give my best to Julie. I will. Take care. Take care, everybody.